everyone welcome back to rose of green uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual today is going to be a gardening questioning and answer um, type of deal uh, but first of all I want to say if you are just catching this now and you've been subscribed for a while hit that little bell up in the, underneath the subscribe button and hit all notifications so that you get all notifications every time I release a video uh, a lot of you guys have been missing my videos because uh, YouTube age restricts them all so if you don't have that notification button tapped you uh, won't know that I released a new video so I have been putting out videos the past year it's just that they've all been restricted for those of you who have been asking Another thing I wanted to mention is join my Discord. Uh, down below in the description, there should be a little arrow around there somewhere. You click that and uh, you'll get a drop down. There will be all sorts of codes and other stuff that I have there. Uh, promo codes for you guys to save. And you'll see the Discord link in there. Click that link and then you could join my Discord. Uh, we have a lot of people joining there already. Uh, a lot of chat going on. There's a help section and all sorts of cool stuff. So. Uh, with that said, this video is brought to you in part by Myers Hydro. You guys know I've been working with Myers Hydro here for a while, but uh, I just want to go here and just show you the lights that I'm using at the time. I'm also using the SP3000, but I'm just going to go ahead and give you a quick glimpse of uh, the FC6500, my favorite light by Myers Hydro, and then their FC8000 as well. So let's take a look at that. For those of you who don't know, this is the Mars Hydro FC6500. Uh, it is a folding light. It runs the Samsung lights and the Osram reds. Pretty efficient light. It's got the dimmer, the driver, and of course you could daisy chain it. But uh, I thought I would show these off, show these lights off in here because uh, I am partnered with uh, Mars Hydro and I work with them, so uh, good idea to show them off in all my videos because uh, they're good to me. But uh, also because I love this light, this FC6500 pumps. But, uh, now we will move on and I'll show you the 8000. And this here is the 8000. See, we've also got the dimmer on this unit here. We got an 8 bar. Uh, it is not a foldable one. Uh, these here are not included. These are just something else that I'm trying out. But uh, this is the FC8000. It's an 800 watt. And uh, yes, these ones have the Samsung whites and the Osram reds as well. Uh, the, uh, the Samsung whites are a mixture of 3000K and 5000K diodes. But these are all shown off now. Now we will continue the video. So they're good to me, Mars Hydro is good to me, so I thought I would throw that in there. Hope you guys enjoyed the fast little clips there. Um, the point of this video is for it to be a monetized video so that I could reach all of the people who uh, haven't been seeing my videos because of the age restriction. So hopefully this video gets out to some of you and you know to hit that bell so that you can see all of my videos. Uh, another reason for this video is that uh, I get a lot of questions often. So uh, I asked my viewers in the last video if they would be interested in me doing like a Q&A and uh, a lot of people were for it. So I went ahead and I picked some questions out from a couple videos and I'm gonna go over them now. So to start, user zero times 891 asks, I'm excited about the auto flower time-lapse. Uh, I'll be doing a time-lapse of auto flowers if you don't know. Uh, just not to confuse you guys but uh, the question is what are your thoughts on autos so uh, my thoughts on autos is that they have come a very long way since uh, a couple years ago a few years ago when all they were were like low riders uh, they didn't yield or anything but now uh, today's day and age people uh, the breeders are really getting a handle on things so I'm starting to like them not as not as bad I do like them, but just not as much as photos. So uh, now autos, you're getting a really good terpene profile. These things are growing really nice and big, and uh, they're producing some weight, some of them. So they, like I said, they've really come a long way, so they're really impressive. And uh, yeah, so hope that answers your question. Uh, another question is from Bibbo Thor. Do you always pH... 
uh, 6.5 with Pro Mix. Uh, and I said the easy answer to that is yes, but I'm running organics, so that depends on what you're running. If you're running synthetics, you might want a pH to like uh, 5.8 to 6.2. Uh, in organics, I pH to about 6.5. But I wouldn't pH my water. If, I, if my water was between 5.5 five and like 7.8, uh, I wouldn't pH it at all. I would just let it go. Even to 8, I would just let it go. But because it's so high and my pH is 8.7 out of the tap, uh, sometimes it's even 8.8 .8 now. I really need to be careful with that. So what I do is I do pH it down and I'll just pH it down to like 6.5. Anywhere between 6 and 7 is perfectly fine. But I just shoot for 6.5 every time just so it's uh, dead center. So uh, to answer your question uh, correctly, I guess the answer would be yes, I do always pH. But like I said, I wouldn't have to or I wouldn't do it. Uh, moving on, next question. LST UK Big Bud asks, uh, Rog, what week of flower do you turn your lights up to max uh, to 1050 PPFD? Much love from the UK. Hey, buddy, I've seen you around in the comment section. I want to say uh, peace out, dear man. Uh, you seem like a good guy. And uh, to answer your question here, um, let me say that I start off, when my seedlings are underneath the dirt, I will start off with about 300 PPFD. Once they grow a couple nodes, I'll put it up to 400 PPFD. Once they grow a couple more and they have like four, four or five nodes, I'll start to crank it up to like 600 PPFD. And then later on in veg, I will work it up to 800 PPFD so that it's ready at week three flower to get that full dose of 800 PPFD. And then from week one to three, I will keep it at about 800 PPFD. And then after week three is when I will crank it to 1050. And then I will play around there. I will even increase it sometimes up to 1200, depending on how the plants like it. Um, Usually the ambient CO2 is around 400, but uh, I've been lucky. I've got it around six, 700 in my house. So I'm able to dial up that PPFD just slightly a little bit more, not much more, but slight amount more. So that's what I do. I play around with it until I see a bit of stress happening with the plant and then I'll put it back down. But uh, for the most part, I like to tell people to run around 400 to 600 in veg and about uh, seven to 900 in flower. Uh, when I suggest that, I know that they're not gonna burn their plants to death or crisp them all up so that I'm not giving them bad information. But what I do is 1050 and up, whatever I can get away with. Hope that answers your question. Charlie Talka, or 2C, I'm not sure, it's T-O-C-C-I. Uh, anyway, Charlie, Thanks for the question, but his question is, is it okay to use uh, pH, general hydroponics, pH up and down while growing with organics, or will that kill off the microbes, and should I use lemon juice? Uh, my pH is roughly 7.2 out of the tap, and I keep it uh, bubbling uh, between waterings. Thank you. Uh, first off, buddy, if you're growing organically and your water is 7.2, don't add anything. Don't pH, don't do anything. Uh, that's just one more step. That's just gonna make it more complicated when you're growing. If your pH is 7.2, you water that right in and your plants will love that up and uh, the microbiology in your soil will uh, buffer that out for you and put it where it wants to be. So that's almost dead where you wanna be anyway. So that's what, uh, that's what I would do. Uh, but to answer your question, no, it will not. Uh, the pH's ups and down will not kill your microbiology or your microbes in your soil. And I recently just learned this myself within like the last six months from a guy named uh, Jeff Lowenfield. Uh, he wrote the book, he's the author of the book of um, uh, the micro book, uh, dealing with microbes or uh, however that goes. Um, uh, why can I not think of the name of that? Oh, Teeming with Microbes. I'm sorry, guys. So, yeah, he did the book Teeming with Microbes. And uh, I just recently watched a podcast where he answered that question. And he said, no, there's not enough. Uh, there's not enough in it to kill all the microbes. There's not, there's not enough in it to do anything to your microbes. So not to worry about it. Uh, he also explained that 
uh, using some synthetics will lower them, but it does not, um, he could not confirm that it kills them, but he says he just wouldn't uh, suggest using a lot of it uh, with uh, your microbes, but he says it will not kill them off completely. Uh, so that's his answer. Uh, so that's my answer because uh, the guy is a brilliant genius when it comes to microbiology and uh, living soils and uh, all of that. Uh, I suggest you look into him. If you don't know who he is already, he's got a couple books, uh, Teeming with Microbes, uh, Teeming with Nutrients, Teeming with Bacteria, and uh, I think he's even got a new one coming out, Teeming with Autoflowers, or something like that anyway. But uh, yeah. So C. Staples says, do you ever grow with synthetics? If so, what company do you prefer? Uh, no, not anymore. I used to grow with synthetics quite a bit. I actually started with organics about uh, 20 or with synthetics about 20 years ago uh, back in the bush. Uh, I haven't been growing for 20 years straight, but I have been growing uh, for about 20 years. I may have taken a year or two off here or there, but uh, yeah, I have used synthetics before and I started, like I said, way back in the day with a company called uh, Plant Products. Uh, it was very easy to use, something like a, a miracle type thing back in the day, only it was better than miracle Grow, And uh, yeah, so that's what I started with. And then uh, I used a couple others throughout the year. Uh, then I went with uh, an, organic, uh, an organic mix that I used. But I really wasn't into organics at the time. But what I did do is I just threw a bunch of uh, blood and bone meal in uh, the soil. And then I added like a rose growing all in one, threw that in the soil, and we let our homemade dripper water that all all year. So I, what I did is I had a system hooked up to a beaver dam, uh, water ran through that beaver dam into a barrel. The barrel had a water timer on it, hooked up to a car battery. Uh, that car battery would open, and um, I there's maple syrup taps that you can get and all this plumbing and piping and that's what I used back in the day because I just couldn't find it for like grow equipment right but uh, anyway we use the uh, maple maple tree piping that they use that makes it all run into one barrel um, I would use that and just run it into my pots so there was always water flowing into this barrel the timer would go off uh, once every three days four days and it would water up all the pots so that I didn't have to track in and out of uh, the bush all the time allegedly um, so that was one way of doing it and then recently within uh, the last 10 years probably maybe 10 years ago while I was still growing in the bush uh, here and there I was using Remo nutrients um, and then eventually within uh, the last three years, I switched to organic. So now I'm an all other organic grower. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, I know I rambled on there a little bit, but uh, I just thought I would explain that a little bit to you. So Patty Helmer asks, what size pots do you use? Uh, Patty, I'd like to use seven gallon pots uh, for my photo periods. It is what I grow in, uh, seven gallon pots. So anyone watching this and wants to know my pot sizes it's seven gallon for my auto flowers I will go anywhere from three to fives uh, if I was gonna grow like three plants in a two by four space I would keep them in three gallons if I wanted to grow only like two of them maybe I would put them into five gallons um, the reason is your auto flowers grow bigger in uh, bigger uh, say bigger buckets or bigger pots are just a looser media. Uh, auto flowers really prefer uh, loose, easy material that their roots can get through. That's why you always see like uh, deep water culture plants growing so well and so big like the auto flowers uh, because the roots of auto flowers hate restriction. The least restriction you give them, the better those auto flowers are going to grow. So uh, anyway, I know this was just a pot question. What size pots do I use? Thought I'd throw a little bit extra in there. And uh, anyway, that's the answer to that. So, WB asks, what brand organics do you use? Uh, I really don't use a brand of uh, organics. Uh, I never really jumped on the like Gaia Green bandwagon ever. Uh, I have used, say, like their back guano uh, separately 
and I have ordered uh, some of their worm castings separately and uh, uh, something else oh yeah their green sand I ordered separately but I never really use their all-in-ones uh, what I do is I use my own uh, mixes and I order my amendments in bulk from a place called Black Swallow Living Soils. That's here in Canada. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. They're just a really good uh, family run company and I really like to support them. So uh, with them being a small company, I try to do all my ordering through them and then I make my own recipes that you guys have seen me show off uh, previously in videos and whatnot. And uh, I just want you guys to keep in mind, I still tweak those recipes here and there. So uh, they might get different you might see me show you a different one from uh, one that I've shown you before or in uh, the past so uh, that's my answer to that one they're just really separate ones there's no brand name to them uh, if I was going to recommend any though what I would do is I would recommend uh, Gaia Green for Canadians and for our uh, United States uh, I believe I already said this earlier in the video um, down to earth Hope that, hope I explained that well enough for you. Okay, Hiker Swin, username Hiker Swin asks, my plants are always droopy. Why? Well, it could be many reasons. It could be from overwatered to underwatered. Uh, the roots could be getting uh, cold at night. Uh, you could have root issues. Uh, typically, I find that it is something to do with the roots. Uh, why you got droop, but um, I'm not sure what your exact issue is. If you lift up your pot, the, a good way to see if you're uh, watering enough is wait until your plant is dry, lift up your pot, see what the weight is like, and then water it and see how heavy your pot is. Um, and then that just gives you an idea of checking the weight of your pot before you water it to see if you're overwatering or not. Uh, or if it's very light, you can light it, lift it with one hand, then you might need to water a little bit more. Um, another thing could be is that if it's winter time where you are, like it is where I am, if your plant is on a concrete floor where it's cold, that's going to be cold to your root system. If there's nothing in between that concrete floor and your root system. So that will cool it down quite a bit. And uh, that could be why you're getting the droop. Uh, they'll droop all day or they will droop until... Um, your pot warms up and that those roots warm up and then you'll see them they will actually start to lift a bit so uh, that could be an issue that you're having I'm not sure I need you to explain more of uh, like what you're doing how you what you've what you have taken out of the equation and uh, just let me know with better instructions of what's going on so I can help you answer that question better but I just answered it the best I can right now so I hope that helps you SMC313 asks, do you water when completely dry or keep soil moist at all times? I am organic growing and I was always told that the soil must never dry out. You couldn't be more right. Uh, don't let your soil dry out. If you're organic growing, you don't want your soil drying out. Um, if, you've watched my, if you watch my channel quite often, you will see that I've let my plants dry out. And that is just because I just missed them or or I was just lazy or something happened and I couldn't get to them in time uh, believe me I do have I take a lot of pride in my plants and uh, care for them as much as I can I hate to see them dry out uh, when you let them dry out what happens is your microbes uh, uh, some of them might die off but what happens is they go dormant they stop working and then it takes them a while to get uh, re-established once you start watering them again uh, the only thing really saving my butt is that I use bottled microbes uh, like Tridus and again I'm not sponsored by them it's just my favorite uh, company to use and uh, they got a really good bottled microbe going on there beneficial microbes for the soil and it really seems to help me out that and the mycorrhizae uh, really helps with stress from uh, not being watered and whatnot so uh, it barely shows if if I let them go dry, uh, you'll barely see any difference in my plants. Like uh, lots of times, if they're drying right out, you'll start to get a lot of yellowing leaves and uh, just stuff like that. But uh, uh, because I catch them in time, I don't do that. So I like to tell all my viewers, make sure that 
uh, your soil is always moist because you don't want to run into issues of dying leaves. Uh, and that could be another question I could answer. Uh, if someone asked, why are all my leaves yellowing? And uh, I've been feeding them and everything. It's either you're overwatering them, that could be one reason, or you're not watering them. That will cause your leaves to go yellow throughout your plant, not just on the bottom. If it's just on the bottom, it's most likely nitrogen. If it's throughout your plant, it could be from watering, bad watering practices. That wasn't the question I asked, but I ramble on, so <laughs> that's what you got. Um, several people ask this question. Well, will you, when will your strain rewind be released? Okay, let me explain this again, okay? What happened is I have the website all up and going. You can see it right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, ROG Seeds. I can't say the uh, total website, but anyway. Um, there's nothing for sale there anyway yet. I do have stuff up there, but uh, and the price is up there, but you can't order yet. They say out of stock, and that is because I'm working on a credit card processor. Uh, what's happening is uh, PayPal, uh, Cash App doesn't work with me because I'm in Canada. Um, Tile, or not Tile, uh, Square, and uh, just a bunch of them. They all won't work with you if you have anything to do with cannabis. Whether you're souvenirs, uh, whether you're selling pipes or bongs, it's really hard to work with them. And uh, PayPal is another one. So I recently just watched a guy lose almost $20,000 in PayPal fees and it, it almost bankrupted him it almost ruined him and he was a seed breeder on Instagram so like uh, it really really hurt him so I'm not taking any chances with uh, my money being seized by a credit card company uh, it's just not something I'm not interested in doing so I want to do this right so what I'm doing is uh, I've been talking to a company who does support uh, cannabis type style for a credit card but what you need to do is you need to apply and uh, you apply, it's type of like an application that you send in, then they look it over because they want to see what, uh, how much money you make and all that, if it's worth it to them, and then you need to pay like an insurance cost uh, just to use them and everything else. It's really, really crazy. It can be expensive, but what I'm doing now is I just sent that application out uh, the other day. I'm waiting for that to come back. They say it usually takes about two weeks. So. Instead of the beginning of January, we might be closer to the beginning of February, but uh, there's nothing I could do there, guys. I'm trying to get them up and going as fast as I can. It's just that uh, it's just I'm getting some setbacks here everywhere I try to go. Um, I also thought about going to a different, uh, using a vendor to do it, but uh, I'm not sure. Like if I go to ship them all to the states. Uh, if that one package gets seized, then I lose it all, right? So it's like, it's hit and miss. It's very difficult what I want to do because no vendors want to, in Canada, that I know, want to do all of the shipping to the States over and over and over because it's a lot of work to ship to the States from Canada. You have a lot of forms to fill out in your custom forms and stuff. So it's just a pain in the butt. So looks like I'm going to have to do it myself and wait for that credit card processor. So that's what we're going to do. Guys, that is today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit different. Remember, hit that like button, comment down below. Uh, if you are subscribed and no longer see my videos, make sure you hit that bell. Don't worry, it's not annoying. It doesn't keep you up at night. It won't be binging all the time. It just gives you YouTube notifications. If it does pop up on your home screen in your phone, just turn it off in your settings and you'll still get the notifications whenever you open YouTube. Anyway, once again, Thanks, guys. I hope you guys are excited and have a good weekend. Peace out.